In this video, we want to take a more in-depth look at data values. And in order to do that, we're going to use a class called student. Now, most classes have two parts, data values and methods. The data values are the beers of a class. And what I mean by that is they represent something. They don't do something. They exist. They don't perform an action. They're like nouns in the English language. So we have name, ID, grade level, GPA, and fundraiser money. All of these represent some kind of value inside of the class. And then on the other side, we have the doers or the verbs, like get name, get ID, get grade level, or get GPA. And we could have many more methods, but in this video, I'm just trying to show you that these are the two types of class members, and one is something that represents some kind of value. And on the other side, we have the actions of a class that are the methods. And when you put these two things together, you get a class. A class has data values and methods. And in this video, we're not going to focus on methods. We're going to focus on data values. I've shown you these data values in the previous slide, but I'm going to add a few more possible data values of the student class. And those are A standard, B standard, C standard, D standard, F standard, and total funds raised. Now, before I show you the difference between the two, I want to give them names. And so the names of the top set are instance variables, and the names of the bottom set are static variables. They all are beers of the class. And so we have instance variables and static variables. Well, what's the difference between the two? If you think of it in terms of a student class, you could think of different students. So if I had Billy, Susie, and Jose, they would all have a different name, a different ID, a different grade level, a different GPA, and they have all raised different amounts of money for a school-wide fundraiser. So we would call these instance variables, or what is true for that particular student. And then on the bottom, we have static variables. Static variables, rather than applying to just one student, would apply to all students. So we have A standard, B standard, C standard, so on and so forth. And what A standard means is that what is the standard to make an A in this particular class? And all of the members of the class, whether they be Jose or Susie or Billy or Tommy or whoever else is part of the class, all have to make, uh, let's say, a 90 in order to make an A in the class or an 80 to make a B in the class. And these would be true for all students. And then finally, at the bottom, we also have one that's not capitalized, total funds raised. Well, how is that different from fundraiser money? Well, fundraiser money is for the individual student. The individual student says, I have raised $50, $100, so on and so forth. But total funds raised would be, what has the entire class raised? So if Bobby has raised $50 and Susie has raised $100, total funds raised would equal $150. So that would be a static variable that's true for all members of the class. Now why is A standard capitalized and total funds raised not capitalized? Well, because anytime you see an all caps value, it should indicate to you that it's a constant, meaning it does not change. So Billy has to make a 90, Sally has to make a 90, Jose has to make a 90, and they cannot change the values in order to change what they have to get in order to make an A. Whereas the bottom static value, total funds raised, it can be changed, but it's still true for all members. If I had a new student come in named Jimmy, and Jimmy raised an extra $20, and so we already have $150, the value would be changed to 170 Some static variables can be changed, others cannot if they are constant. Now let's look at the math class to get some clarity on this. The math class has a couple static variables, and those are math.py and math.e, or just pi and e. And if we were to run the program, we would get values like 3.14159, so on and so forth. That's the value of pi. Or if we ran math.e, we would get 2.718281, so on and so forth, or Euler's number. Now, both of these do not perform some kind of action, but rather they represent some kind of value inside of the class. And what class is that? That's the math class. 
how can we recognize that these are not methods, but rather they are data values that we're trying to pull out of a class? Well, it's fairly simple. Methods will always have parentheses. And because pi and e do not have parentheses at the end, we know that they are data values and not methods. And we know that they're static variables because they're all caps. You could not say math dot lowercase p lowercase i or math dot lowercase e. This would result in an error. You have to say capital P, capital I, or capital E because they are constants in the class. You wouldn't want one person to use pi and the value to be 3.14159 and another person to use it and somebody decided to change it to 1.8. But rather, you want them as constants and so that's exactly what they are in the class. They're not only data values, but they're static constant variables inside of the math class. Let's break down how to use a variable, whether it be instant or static inside of a class. First, you're going to use the name of the class, like math. Then we have the dot operator, which gives us access to the math class. And finally, we have the variable. So we have class dot operator variable. And this value is then going to represent a data value from the class. In this example, I want to show how to use both a data value and a method inside of a programming example. And what I've chosen to find is the area of a circle. And we can see in the bottom left hand corner here that an area of the circle is equal to pi times r squared or radius squared. So I have a value called radius. I use math.pi, which is going to represent the data value inside of the class, times math.pal which is taking the first value to the power of the second value, so radius squared, and when it prints out, it should and does give us the area of this particular circle. And the area would be 314.159, so on and so forth. And we can obviously tell that math.py is an attribute because it is missing the parentheses, and math.pow is a method because it has the parentheses after it. As shown in the beginning of the video, classes contain two things, data values and methods. Data values are the beers or nouns of a class. They don't perform an action, but they represent some kind of value. Data values can then be broken up into two parts, static and instant. Static are true for the entire class, whereas instant are true for one particular object or in the example that I gave you, one particular student. So one student has a name versus another student has a different name. But all students have to submit to what is a standard in order to make an A in this particular class. How can you recognize data values when they're being used? They will not have parentheses after them. Simple way to do it. So math.pi, math.e, pi and e do not have parentheses after them. Therefore, we know that they are data values. If a variable is uppercase, it will be constant. So pi and e are all caps, and that's important. And it tells the user that these values cannot be changed. They have been declared final inside of the class, and no one can change their values, nor would we want them to change the values. In understanding classes, it is important to understand the distinction between data values and methods. When you're working with either a method or a data value, you're going to have different types of rules. And understanding these rules is going to be essential in writing good code. Data members will represent some kind of value in a class, and you now have the tools to recognize when they're being used.